Look at this. Look where I am. I'm back in the lab. It's not the end of lockdown, but I've got a special permission to come in because I've got a whole bunch of stuff I need to do to get ready for next term. Watch the vlog to find out more. Um, but oh, I feel so good to be back. <laughs> you know you're lucky when you miss your workplace, right? Anyway, to celebrate, we're gonna talk about the anatomy of the nasal septum. We've done the bones of the nasal cavity. We've done the nasal cartilages. We're just gonna look at the nasal septum because it's not just a single sheet. Well, it is a single sheet, but it's made up of multiple structures. So I should, I should get some things. Look who's back. Look who's here. The nasal cavity is the start of the respiratory tract. And whilst if we look at a skull, it looks like a, you know, single hole with some shapes inside there, you know that you've got two nostrils and you've got two airways. Um, we most, we're most often reminded of this when we have a cold. The cold virus is another form of coronavirus, isn't it? Anyway, the, the, uh, when you have a cold, your nose gets blocked. And um, you might often notice that one airway gets blocked, but the other one's okay, and then the other one gets blocked, and the other one's okay, and it goes through kind of this cycle. So you, you really notice having two airways. So the anatomy of the nasal septum will describe how that nasal cavity is split into two separate airways. Um, and we'll also talk about a deviated nasal septum as well because the nasal septum can be damaged or the effects of that. It's very mechanical, you can work it out, I think. There are three major parts to the nasal septum and a couple of minor parts. And when we look at a skull like this, you can see the individual bones. So here's the maxilla surrounding much of the nasal cavity. These are the nasal bones here. If we look inside, we can see that in the roof of the nasal cavity is a yellow bone and that yellow bone is also forming the medial wall of the orbit. That's the ethmoid bone. And if we take the calvarium off this skull, the ethmoid bone is here. So this is the, the surface of the ethmoid bone inside the cranial cavity. This is the cribriform plate with a number of holes in it and a little bit of a ridge. So it's a single central bone, the anatomy of which is actually quite difficult to get to grips with. Um, but the roof, of the nasal cavity is formed by the ethmoid bone. So then this, this bony sheet running down the midline here, this is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. And that's one part of the nasal septum. So that's a bony part of the nasal septum. Now that perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone runs down and it, it looks like it continues all the way down to the maxilla, but it's actually meeting another bone if we go back to the coloured skull, you can see that it's meeting a separate bone in there, an orange bone, and that's Voma, which is a lovely name. The word Voma comes from the word for plowshare, you know, like that kind of V-shaped thing. It's like a plow, it turns the soil as it's pulled through the soil. You have to look it up. Um, and that's another bony part of the nasal septum. So much of the nasal septum posteriorly is bony, and it's forming kind of this V-shape gap. And of course, the reason there's a gap there, I mean, we can see the nose doesn't look like it continues here. It looks like there's a big hole in the middle of the front of your face. You know that that hole is covered by your nose. So your nose is made of cartilage, and this is just a bony skull, so the cartilage has been lost. So that suggests then that that bony V is infilled with cartilage forming the nasal septum. We talked about that when we looked at the, 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 the cartilages of the nose. So the cartilages of the nose form like a tent and that tent is pushed anteriorly by this cartilaginous nasal septum which is what's separating your two nostrils into left and right and that then runs posteriorly back to meet Voma and the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone and they blend together that's the inside the nasal cavity. So they blend together then to form this single nasal septum. Septum means fence, it's a divider, right? So that's, and then it's covered in mucosal, mucosal membrane. Um, 
and that's it. That's the nasal septum. But look how far back Voma goes. So we said, this was the ethmoid bone here in the midline. Ethmoid, it's a, it's a, it's a sieve-like bone. It means sieve, because it's got all those little holes in it for the olfactory nerve. Um, there's the ethmoid bone, there's Voma, and then down here is the maxilla. That's the maxilla, and that's the palatine bone. Um, and we'll come back to those in a moment, but this here, this central bone, this is the sphenoid bone. So the sphenoid bone is another central bone of the skull. It's like butterfly shaped. It's, um, it's, it's in this region here, extending out a couple of wings laterally. So the Voma pushes all the way back to the sphenoid bone. And what we can see here is we can see the sphenoidal sinus. And then here's the airway here and the soft tissues descending, hanging from, from the skull. Now what we can see quite here quite well, which is difficult to see in other models, is this, this bony connection here. So the, the hard palate is here. This is the roof of your mouth, the hard palate. And this is the soft palate part of the roof of your mouth. You can palpate this with your tongue, right? If you, if you palpate it with your tongue, where it's hard, that's the hard palate. And then when it becomes soft posteriorly, there's the soft palate. So the anterior most part, and the most of the hard palate is made up of the maxilla. That's forming the roof of your mouth. And there's a crest, a sticky uppy bit. It crests up into the nasal cavity and that contributes to the nasal septum. And then posteriorly to the maxilla, we have the palatine bones. They're kind of almost L-shaped, sending long processes up here. But the, the palatine bones are forming part of the hard, hard palate. They're helping form the shapes of the nasal cavity. And they also have these palatine crests, so maxillary crest and palatine crest here are forming the remaining inferior most part of the of the uh, nasal septum and these are the other the voma then is attaching to these so that's the nasal septum three major parts and a couple of minor parts so now you know the anatomy of the nasal septum what do we mean when we say deviated nasal septum well that midline nasal septum is pushed to one side or the other and you can see that the bony parts of this are thin flat bones not the strongest bone you might choose to make and the septal cartilage, the cartilaginous part, is also a flat, thin bit of cartilage projecting out of your face. So that's not like super strong either. So a deviated nasal septum is, I think, most commonly caused by trauma to the face, a blow to the face, um, but it can also be congenital. It might just form differently. By the way, remember that we're not perfect and we're not symmetrical. So usually, although we talk about a midline nasal septum, usually it's, you know, a little bit off to one side or the other because that's what makes us so great, right? Makes us so individual. But a deviated nasal septum then is pushing that septum to one side or the other. So what's going to happen? Well, the obvious mechanical effect is that one airway is going to become smaller and one airway is going to become larger. And the purpose of, or rather, if this is the start of the respiratory tree, the, the anatomy here is set up to warm and humidify the air as it enters the body. So it's got a rich blood supply. So if one of the airways becomes much larger, it might see a much larger volume and throughput of air, causing it to be more, like, more likely to dry out, which might cause more nosebleeds and things like that. When I was talking about when you have a cold, so the blood vessels in the nasal cavity expand, you get inflammation, you get mucus production, and one or both of those airways might become blocked and it swaps from side to side. Now swapping from side to side is normal. Like my right nasal airway is more open at the moment. My left one's a little bit closed. I'm not ill, I'm perfectly healthy, I hope. I'm, you know, this is normal. So you will normally have one airway that's doing more work than the other, and that will swap from side to side, and you won't notice. But if you have a deviated nasal septum, you probably will notice, because when the airflow is through the larger um, nasal cavity half, the flow will be easy, but when it swaps to the constricted space, then you'll notice that breathing through your nose becomes harder and you'll start breathing through your mouth. You might notice this when you're sleeping. Sleeping might become uncomfortable and you sleep, you know, breathing during sleeping might be noisy, that sort of thing. So that's a deviated nasal septum.
And those are the sort of signs of a devi deviated nasal septum and some of the things you might encounter. It can be, you know, if needs be, it can be corrected surgically or, you know, most of the time, if needs be. Okay, that's it. Um, as my first day back in work for 150 days, I have overextended myself a little bit today and time is getting on. So brief one, useful anatomy though, worth knowing about. But now I'm allowed to come back and use the lab, we can maybe explore some other topics I haven't been able to explore in my back garden. All right? Right, on to the next job. See you guys next week. <laughs>